Everything everything that, that gets caught in this room goes just bursts into flames. <laughs> welcome to Dwarf Fortress and welcome to the channel. I am Twisted Logic. I'm gonna show you how to build this magma mist melting chamber. <laughs> Anybody who runs into this room just immediately bursts into flames. And the idea or the premise of this is that the right side here goes out into the open world where a siege or any kind of invaders would come in. And the left side here is the safe area of the fortress. Now, normally we would have everything forbidden in here and not part of the burrow. So that way the doors weren't running in. Uh, but we're doing that as kind of a test. So let's build it. This build is going to be at least two layers. So this is the lower level here. And this is the upper level. I chose this location because there's nothing on either one of these levels in the area and it's also close to where I can tap magma right over to the area. So we're going to start on the upper level here and we're going to find the center line just like that of where we want to build it. So over on the left side is going to be in the fortress, over on the right side is going to be outside of the fortress. There's a, there's a direction to where we're building this, um, so that's why I say that. Okay, so I want to also, I'm checking the layer below. I have this I have this room dug out about five tiles off of the stairs on the layer below. So I want to take that into account on the, for the build. So that's plus five and then maybe plus another five. And so we'll probably start it like right here. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to have a, a section just like this right where we want to start it. Okay. So this is going to be part of the build here. And then we're going to channel down eight spaces. So four by two right there. Channel down two spaces, another four by two, another two spaces, another four by two. And then one final, just like that. And then we're going to match it on this side here. And we can even do a little bit faster like that. Okay. Now these sections here, we're gonna fill in with regular mining. Just like this. And then we're gonna take this section right here and bring it all the way around, just like that. Just like this, but we're gonna leave these two spaces here and those are gonna be channeled down. So it's a relatively simple shape. We're going to let them mine it out. Excellent. This is the shape we're going for. It looks good. We're going to go down one level and we're going to connect our magma tube. Just like that. And now this magma tube isn't going to breach yet. We're going to breach it from above on this tile right here with a channel. Okay, so we're going to not dig in over to that yet. Okay, now that we got most of this clear, we're going to go to build construction and track and we are going to start from this spot right here and we're going to go over one just like that everything's going to be made out of copper just because I have a lot of copper right now we're starting on the end of the track to make that bend build construct track and then we're going to start right there and come over all the way across all copper and if it doesn't have this bend right here then when they build it the bend isn't going to be there so you want to make sure that that's looks like that before they build build construct track okay so we want to do this shape right here on both sides okay and then we're going to go to back to build construct track and we're going to start right here right and we're going to go all the way over here all copper Build construct track right here, all the way over here. All copper. Okay, down one level, we're going to go to designations and remove construction and move, remove floor. So we're going to click that right there. And we're going to select this whole area just like that. And we're going to keep these two ramps right here for them to get up and down out of this layer. And we're removing all the ramps and all the construction on this level. So we're not going to let them build the track on this level. Okay. And then unpause and we'll let them do that. 
Excellent, so the upper level looks like this right here, and the lower level looks like this right here. So we're going to add in doors. We're going to add in two doors here. Okay. Golden door right there. And another door right here. Okay, now we want to choose if we want power on the left or the right. I have a little bit more space to work with on the right, so power is going to come in from this side. So right here we're going to dig two power tunnels. And those are going to connect to power supplies. So let's see how much power we're going to need. Okay, so build machines and fluids and rollers. And we're going to roll south on the second highest setting. Okay, select material after placement right here on this tile. Double click that. Obsidian mechanism and iron chain. Okay, we're going to build another set of rollers. It's going to roll east, second highest setting. And we're going to put it right here. Just right there. Okay. Obsidian. And iron chains. I might have to build some more iron chains here. So the bottom is going to be clockwise. And the top here is going to be counterclockwise. Another set of rollers. Roll to the east. Second highest setting. Right here. So these four spots, they're rolling to the east on the second highest setting. We're going to roll to the west on this roller, second highest setting. And we're going to do it right across from this one, so right here. Okay. Obsidian. Iron chain. And the other set of rollers here, we're going to roll to the west and we're going to set it on the lowest speed. And right here where we built the other one, we're going to skip one space. We're going to start it right there, and then we're going to stretch it across all the way to the door right here. Okay, obsidian. And iron. And then the final one on the lower level roller is going to roll to the north. Second highest setting right here, diagonal from the door. Build machines and fluids and a gear assembly. Okay, and we're going to put a gear assembly here at the end. Obsidian. Another gear assembly right here. I'm going to keep building after placement. We're going to put one right here. Obsidian right here. Obsidian. Any magma safe is fine. And we don't need one down here. Okay. Then we're going to go to build. Machines and fluids and a horizontal axle. That's going to go east to west, and we're going to connect up these two. Any material is fine there. East to west. Right there. East to west right here. And another one east to west right here. So this horizontal axle is connected to the roller. It doesn't need the gear assembly. It can connect directly to the roller, okay? And then when we go to attach power incoming, we're going to have a horizontal axle attached directly to the roller here and here as well. So all the machines here for the bottom is complete and it's going to require 74 power. And we're just going to mirror this on the top. So this one is going clockwise and the top is going to be going counterclockwise. So we're going to reverse all the directions, but everything's going to be pretty much the same. So gear assemblies, we're going to get those in right here. Okay, excellent. We got 74 power on both sides. Nice. Okay. So maybe they don't have to be magma safe because I was just thinking about that the um, all the axles are, are wood and they'll be fine. Okay, so right over here, uh, I'm going to channel down these three tiles here and these three tiles here. Okay, we're just going to see if this is feasible or not with the micro reactor. We're going to build a gear assembly right here and right here. Okay, and we're going to build a water wheel. So machines and fluids, water wheel, east to west right here. 
and another one east to west right here. Okay, let's see. Build a horizontal axle east to west, and we're going to connect that gear assembly to the roller, just like this. East to west, just like this. Okay, excellent. Those are built now. Let's see. Total power needed is 91 for the entire system on both sides. So this side is 91, and this side is 91. This water wheel is going to provide 100 power. Excellent. Down one level here, we're going to remove the ramps out of the center tiles, just like that. Okay, center tile on the top is no longer a ramp, and then we're removing that one as well. Excellent. So now we're going to start adding the minecart routes. We're going to add a route. We're going to name this one N micro R. So that's North Micro Reactor. And we're going to add a track stop. Okay. And we're going to put that right here. Center. Okay. We're going to add a minecart to that track stop. That's not part of anything else. So this one look right here looks good. And we're going to remove all the conditions from it. Done. Now we're going to go to the build menu. Constructions. And a physical track stop. Okay. This is going to dump to the east or the west. Doesn't matter. On the full resistance. So right there on the center. And we're going to make that out of whatever material we have on hand. Another one, same direction on the lower side here, maximum resistance. So both of these track stops are complete, and they're going to be dumping to the west. Let's make the, the other route here. So we're going to name this one S Micro R. And we're going to add that track stop to the center right here on the south. Okay, we're going to remove all the conditions from it. We're going to add a mine cart that is not part of anything else. Right here. Okay, so we're going to go to zones and we're going to select a pit and pond. Okay, and we're going to put that pit and pond right here on top of the water wheel. Except that pond is not full. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom, right here, one tile long, pond is not full. And we're going to make a, we can make up to three of them here, because it's going to be one bucket per zone. One dwarf works one water zone, so if we did the water zone across the whole thing, only one dwarf is going to be working that, so. Pond is not full there, we'll do a second one down here. Except pond is not full. Okay, and we need to get 16 units of water into this, into the top and the bottom of this. So this is going to be five, five, six, five, five, six. <laughs> so water wheels need a depth of four, seven, or higher water moving in order to operate. And the minecart needs a depth of six, seven of water in order to dump. And this is the micro reactor. Okay, so I built two lever rooms here. So we're gonna go to build machines and fluids and a lever. Okay, and we're gonna put a lever in the center of this one. And a lever in the center of this one. So this top lever right here, we're gonna link to the doors. We're going to link the top lever to both doors, okay? And the bottom lever here, we're going to link to both gear assemblies connected to the water wheels. So the bottom lever is going to be able to turn power on and off, and the top lever is going to be able to open and close these doors. Okay, so I just paused the game, and if I mouse over these three tiles, they're all five seven of water on the bottom level so one of these two zones i'm going to disable because we only need one more unit of water in there so that one's destroyed okay so one more unit of water in the bottom is that it that was not it 
Oh, there we go. So you see it jumped over to a seven here. So we got seven, seven, we got five, seven, and we got four, seven. So if you add all that up, that's 16 units of water. So then we're gonna destroy the zone on the bottom. We have to be really quick about it. So destroy that zone. So the bottom here is done. And you see it just turned on as well. So the top here, let's see, five, four, seven, five. So two more units of water in here. Each bucket is one unit of water. Excellent, this one just turned on as well. So this one's ready to go. So we're gonna destroy these two zones. Excellent. So now both micro reactors are online and we have 100 power and we only need 91. Excellent, so we're gonna flip this switch here, pull the lever, and that's gonna disable power on both the upper and lower. So these gear assemblies are disengaged, but the water wheel still will move, okay? So the minecart here, you can see it in action. Okay, so we're gonna go back into hauling, a new route, and this one we're gonna rename to be Melt One. Okay, and we're gonna add the stop right next to the door, just like that. We're gonna remove all the conditions. Done, we're gonna add a minecart Anything that's not part of anything else. Just like that. Oh, that one's 100% full, so we don't want that one. So we're going to pick a different minecart. So this one's empty. So that one, that, that's good. We're going to use the empty one. So if I add these markers in here, you could see that it's 10 spaces. So 5, and another 5, and we're going to, we're going to add in 10 minecarts here, and 10 minecarts here. Okay. They're all going to be created the same, so a new route, and we're going to rename this to be Melt 2, and we're going to add the stop right next to Melt 1 right there, remove all the conditions, and we're going to add a minecart that is not part of anything else and also empty. Excellent. And now we're going to continue that until we have 20 of them. Okay, excellent. All 20 stops are completed, and it makes it a little bit easier if you make the guide kind of like this. Just some blueprints off to the side so you can count one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. So we're going to do a save of the game right now. Okay, game saved. This is all ready to go. So we're going to start filling magma. So right here, we're going to dig out this. Okay, excellent. We got stable sevens here all around and we are ready to test so we're gonna pull this lever here this one is linked to the gear assembly so that's gonna turn power on so now all the rollers are engaged and now we're gonna pull this lever here and that's gonna open the doors and we're gonna see if this still works excellent Excellent. Very excellent. If I go down one level, we have no carts on the bottom level. All the carts are rolling through, and if I pause the game here, you can see this magma mist all along the pathway here. There's magma mist everywhere in this room. It kind of comes and goes. So you can see it here on the bridge if I zoom in. Well, let's unpause the game. Excellent. So I just want to give a shout out to Nate Middleman who created this design over seven years ago in version 43.03. .03. Still works, Nate. Great job. So the minecart is going across. Each one of the minecarts is going across the gap. It's landing in the magma and skipping across it to the next section of track here as well. And then it, it just creates these ripples in the magma which create magma mist. And so this is a melting magma super weapon. And so if I tell my miners to mine out this section right here, um, let's do priority one so they come a little bit faster. As they run through this tunnel, uh, they're gonna melt. <laughs> and so what we'll really do is we'll turn this whole thing off and make it safe. And then we'll dig this up to the surface. Okay, here they come now, we got, yes. 
Excellent. You see, he just immediately ran into the magma mist and caught on fire. Feb. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let's see if we can get more of them to come in. Because um, he's kind of blocking the path here. Him being on fire is blocking pathing. We might be able to improve upon this design a little bit. Okay, let's see. We got a bunch of them coming in here. Yes! <laughs> they just burst into flames. Yeah, when the name is flashing like this, Odib, Odib is completely on fire right now. Um, Tossid is not on fire yet, but he's about to be, just hanging out in the room. Uh, there may be like one or two safe spaces, like right here maybe a safe space. I'm not really sure how the magma mist propagates. <laughs> yes, he's on fire. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so we we canceled all the designations over here and we forbid everything in this room so the doors have no reason to come in here. And to shut the machine down, we're going to pull the lever that closes the doors here. Once the carts line up at the end, we have to let them we have to wait for them to reline up. So now they're back in their positions here. Okay, the child here is playing in the room. <laughs> so maybe we're also going to set this as a restricted area, the whole thing. And then we'll disable the power. Everything looks kind of clear. Excellent. And so now we can unforbid everything in this room. And the dwarves can kind of clean up. Thank you very much for watching and subscribe for more videos.